Hey guys, welcome to the next Smoke and Flame quick tip. Now this one's uh, going to be on a cool technique. Um, my design director triggered my uh, brain thought on this, which was um, automated 2D to 3D stereoscopic uh, conversion. So this uh, method uses motion and parallax to extract the right eye. So this footage is um, all just shot single camera with the red and I'm going to be showing you the technique to extract a 3D camera from it and get some pretty usable information. So um, let's uh, pause playback and uh, control escape. I'm just going to select my clip and go effects, create connect effects. Now the first thing I want to do is go and grab a motion analysis and just pipe him in and then change this from quarter to, I'll go up to four res actually. Now because this is fairly uh, computationally heavy, I'm going to create a connect effects with that and I'm just going to go down to timing, select it, and press render. Now, the really cool thing about this technique is it's almost, uh, because it's completely dependent on motion, it's, uh, it's almost like a dynamically triggered 3D effect. So if you had a static shot where someone did a turn to camera, you would get 3D only when the turn actually happens, if that makes sense. So um, not necessarily uh, to be used just for stereo 3D conversions, but also in a creative way. So, um, yeah, so let's um, hope this renders in a sec. And there we go. And now if I just scrub through, you see it's given us um, some uh, motion vector passes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push this over here and grab this. And the first thing I'm going to add is in pixel spread. So I'm just press P, grab pixel spread and shift alt, make it front, back and mat. And then for the forward vector, I want to grab my motion analysis. I'm just going to unpipe that and pipe that in. And the first thing I'm going to do is change this from parallax to vector warp. And it defaults to a pretty crazy value. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this. Uh, I'm going to go back to zero and then pull it in negative. And I'm going to pull it somewhere around negative seven. And I'm just going to pull up the blur on the actual spread of the, the motion analysis. Now, uh, by default, you see what it's doing is it's pulling in the motion vectors from the previous frame. So if I'm on the first frame and then go back, you see it's going to the previous frame. But uh, again, in a, if I go F1, F4, in a more uh, mathematical way where the stuff in the foreground is going to have less motion compared to the background. So the first way to test this is go to effects nodes and then just grab an a stereo spark. And I'm just going to shift alt, make the source, my untouched source, the left eye. And as my right eye, I'm going to make it my pixel spread output. So I'm just going to unpipe that and then pipe that here. And then I'm just going to change my stereo mode to mono. And the first thing you notice if you zoom in on this is we're getting a lot more separation here for the, uh, the red green and uh, less here. So if you're like me and you're a nerd and you have stereo uh, anaglyph glasses ready, I'm just going to chuck mine on. And the first thing you can notice if we zoom this out is if we scrub through, you see we're actually getting um, pr true 3D separation from uh, the the bush here to the background. Now, uh, you know, this technique isn't without its flaws, but um, in terms of a pretty automated uh, 2D to 3D, uh, uh, you know, technique, it's, um, it's actually doing quite well. And I mean, if we, um, if we go to the stereo and then uh, minus click and make it context, double click on the pixel spread and press one. So we're viewing it in context and I'll just alt click on um, my two values. So it's zeroed out the keyframes. And you see if we pull further on this technique, on the actual, sorry, the distance for the motion vector. You see, we can quickly kind of dial in our convergence point. And if you have glasses on right now, you'll be able to see we're getting some very cool uh, information that's actually doing a really good job of automating a, a 2D to 3D conversion process. Now, again, this could be used in creative ways and, um, you know, a, a whole bunch of other ways. But um, I just thought I'd share this with you because um, I thought it was quite cool when um, I stumbled across this. And uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, you guys will be able to use this in your day to day. And um, yeah, uh, if you have any more uh, tutorial requests or uh, you know, a different way that maybe you have used this, um, drop me a line, uh, stay tuned for more.